what's up youtube hey guys and welcome to part two of our one year anniversary series today we're going to talk about our elopement process our planning process from beginning to the end how we even came up with the idea of elopement and just kind of walk you guys through our entire process of planning <laughs> mm -hmm. so you want to get started yeah let's jump right into it <laughs> okay so when we first initially got engaged um you know we were going to go the traditional route we were going to we went we visited a few um venues here in atlanta mostly in the city we didn't really venture out too much outside of the city because we knew well we were thinking about like people traveling and the convenience that they would have if we if we were just you know centrally located Mm -hmm. And so when we went to like the different venues and anybody that's planning a wedding or has planned a wedding knows just how expensive it is, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah costs, it costs a grip. It's so expensive. And so we would go and, you know, we'd already be at $3,000 and we're, we've only gotten the bar, the premium alcohol at the bar. We haven't rented the place. We haven't, we haven't took any pictures. We haven't even eaten yet. So we, but we've already spent $3,000 on the bar. So we haven't even rented the venue. Let's, we didn't even talk about it. We haven't even rented the venue, right. but we've already paid $3,000. Oh, I mean, it was an eye-opening experience for me. And so when we actually went to these places, we were like, oh yeah, we had all these ideas and how it would look cool and, um, you know, stuff could go here and the DJ would be over there and, yeah. you know, all of this. But like she said, I mean, it, it, you it know, we were, we were easily going to spend, you know, $15,000 by, by, by just, just getting the venues. So after about four or five visits to venues, we were like, okay, let's, let's, you know, go back to the table. Let's go back and regroup, really figure out what we want to do, really determine what's important to us. And so when we did that, it, it all kind of made sense for us to be like, okay, well, what do we want? You know, what do we want our day to look like? So after all the money spent, after all the parties, all the all the food, after all the chicken has been eaten, all the <laughs> the wine has been drank, drank, drunk, whatever, drank. <laughs> drank. <laughs> right. It's still YouTube. What would be the most, um, you know, effective and most uh, cool idea that we wanted to do? And when we got to thinking about that, we we came up with this crazy elopement plan. Yeah. And just looking at various options throughout the U.S., you know, where where could we go? Where's the where's the place that most people, you know, elope to? You know, right. so right. And then I just come home one day and I'm like, when we go to Paris, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I was like, no, that's too expensive. That's yeah. crazy. Like, you know, why? Let's make it even more special by doing it out of the country. And right. I mean, there's some obvious. Uh, uh, things or obstacles you got to overcome when you're trying to get married out of the country And I think that was part of her initial no too because I think you thought it was dope from the beginning Well, no, I, would, I thought I mean I thought it was a good idea, but I was like it's gonna be way too expensive That's crazy, you know, yeah, like I mean crazy. it's just a crazy idea right. and I was just like Okay, so we're being fair. Let me do my my due diligence and do my research And then when you did your <laughs> research what you found? I found that it was very feasible. Yeah, it was feasible. <laughs> my biggest thing is because I knew that we were going to do the, the elopement and I knew that my pictures and my video, they were my priority. Um, because people weren't going to be there with us. The only memories they would have of our day are the, are the pictures and the video. So when I started doing my research and looking um, at different photographers and I went to Instagram, if anybody knows me, they know I am an Instagram stalker. <laughs> I will hashtag you to death. Like I'll every I found my whole team for my Paris for our elopement in Paris on Instagram. And so when I in, in doing my research, I had narrowed it down to about two or three photographers. And the photographer that I actually went with, his name is Fran, I think Baloney. Fran Baloney. <laughs> Fran Baloney. I don't know. I hope that's how you pronounce his last name. But he's, he's he's dope though. He's he's awesome. He's and great. so I went um to his profile and his pictures were just amazing and so i emailed him and i mean he was he was the most friendliest nicest person just easy to work with very responsive and for me and i know you guys probably watch our old, our uh, food videos our food vlogs i'm big on customer service okay <laughs> so he just he was just amazing i mean just his response time the the uh, his ideas and his just conversation was just amazing 
so once I booked him, I, I asked him, you know, did you have, do you have any, you know, makeup artists and videographers that you can recommend or whatnot? So again, he gave me a couple of options um, for videographers. I checked out our videographer's page. I stalked him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I looked at his reviews, everything. And when I say like, he again. He was amazing. He was amazing. He, he, like, went, he went above and beyond. He really did. He, he, really, he really did. did. And um, he, even to the point where he wasn't necessarily satisfied with what we had done even though he had been with us since like 5 a.m. in the morning yeah and he just stayed a couple of extra hours right. just to get additional shots that weren't even a part of that our he didn't package. even have to yeah. do right so, my makeup artist um on arena it was also also recommended by my photographer and so i went to her again very responsive um I'm not gonna lie, I was across the world. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know if they knew how to do makeup and especially yeah. like brown makeup, like, you know. Um, For those with melanin. <laughs> <laughs> brown girls. <laughs> and so, of course, I stalked her, I sent her pictures. I even asked her, like, outright, like, I'm uh, a brown complexion. Are you familiar or are you comfortable with that? This is my day and I wanna make sure it's perfect. But either way, so she was on my, she was amazing. <laughs> So even after we had already got the glam squad together, I, at the further research, I realized that we needed a celebrant. For those of you who don't know what an, a celebrant is, because I didn't know what a celebrant was, um, they're the ones that actually officiate the ceremony. A center or tailor your ceremony around your particular religion. So, um, but you fill out this whole entire form like he had to feel when I was like two or three pages and it talks about ask you about your family how you feel about them and you know what inspired you how they inspired you so it's very very detailed and even of those that don't know I lost my mom so she was actually able to incorporate that into our ceremony so that was very very special uh let's run down the list again so we had a friend who was a photographer mm -hmm. who hooked us up with a lot of the other I uh, mean, service people. I can't say, I can go on and on about friend. <laughs> we had Twan, who was a videographer. He's amazing. I don't know the name of your makeup artist. Oh, Rihanna. Oh, Rihanna. I mean, I mean, uh, on Arena. On, on Arena. On Arena. Uh, who was actually from America. Yeah, she was American. There, she lived in Paris. But she lived yeah. in Paris, right. which was dope. Jean-Pierre yes. was our chauffeur. So once we got to the Eiffel Tower, I realized I didn't even have my bouquet. I was, I was just a mess. And so Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre, he went all the way back to our hotel. And let me tell you guys, this guy's about 65. Six, no, he was older. Like, nah, he was probably like 70 <laughs> and kept a cig. And he, no, cigar. <laughs> oh, cigar, yeah. Yes. Kept a cigar in his And mouth so he and went up. all the way back to our hotel and yeah. got my bouquet and saved my life. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then we had Odd as a celebrant. As a celebrant, right. That was the, that was the team. Yes. Yes, and we'll link, I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to Paris to get married or not, but hey, if you are, we'll link their Instagram pages below, so yep. <laughs> so yep. you'll have that. I mean, they got there at 5 a.m. and stayed with us uh, literally almost up to one o'clock. And we, we were with them like, more so with Fran all day long. Yeah, and they, they just wanted to make it perfect. Yeah, you can tell they, they were did. invested in us. And they um, made it absolutely perfect. Yeah, <laughs> just so y'all just so know, when you get married in Paris and you elope, for whatever reason. There is some uh, official paperwork that you have to do before you even leave the state. So um, the actual ceremony itself is just uh, symbolic. So we had a pretty cool and interesting story of how we actually got officially married or so as Brandy started researching how to how to actually get married in Paris. Yeah. Um, she realized that you you couldn't actually get married there. Well, you can. You just have to be a resident for four years. Right, right. <laughs> And I started to panic. I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> Obviously, we haven't lived in Paris for four years, so we like <laughs> how, how we do this. So we go down to the courthouse. But the thing about uh, getting married, as you may well know, is you know it's not official until your uh, clergyman or your celebrant or somebody signs it. And it's not legal to get the celebrant in Paris to sign it it would be null and void. They gave us two options. They was like, hey, you know, have your um, person who was officiating your ceremony, sign it at the end of it, bring it back to us and mail it back and we'll send you your marriage license. Or go upstairs and get married at the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> we did plan C. So, you know, we were like, okay, the, the courthouse thing is so impersonal for us. We want it to be a little bit more special than that. And we, this was literally like, three or four days before we left for Paris. And, oh, by the way, 
nobody knew that we were going to Paris. So it was <laughs> not no one that could sign our marriage license. <laughs> right. No, nobody knew we were going to Paris. Actually, so we're like, what? Like, how, how are we going to get this done, you know, in two days? Because we fly out. Um, and so if y'all don't know, my dad is actually a pastor. Um, so what we did was we broke our silence and invited him to lunch and kind of just dropped the bomb on him. <laughs> he lives about, I don't know, 70 miles south of us. So we drove down, made the little hour and a half trek, told him we wanted to go to lunch. And to our surprise, once we told him what we were actually doing and how we were going to go to Paris and elope and we needed his, his help, he says, Oh, I knew y'all had something up y'all sleeves. I just knew it. <laughs> and so he was all for it, excited. He was uh, proud to put his name on the marriage certificate. So well, <clears throat> I think it's time to kind of address some of you guys' questions because we got flooded by subscribers and uh, some of our followers on Instagram with questions related to the elopement. Right. So let's jump right into them. Okay, so we're going to go over just a couple of questions because a lot of them were repeat questions. So we hope that we can um, address everyone's questions now. What was your what was your most memorable moment about your elopement in Paris? Okay. I know for me, I mean, there's a there's a bunch of different moments. Um, I, the whole experience because we were over there, what, five days? Yeah, we were over there five days total. Say too long. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were over there five days total, uh, and you know we just bonded like crazy because we were doing this thing that nobody knew we were doing, and it was just us. Either way, uh, when we were in the Eiffel Tower Gardens, and it was Odd and Twan and Fran, and they had pulled her to the side. And she walked down our um, makeshift aisle. Our makeshift aisle. Because <laughs> I wanted my aisle experience. Yeah, it was like a grassy knoll. <laughs> and I'm standing there looking at her like, wow. Um, so I always go back to that moment. And it was it was pretty magical. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> All right. So what was your moment? I would say like my mom, my favorite moment was when we got there, it was like when we got to the Eiffel Tower Gardens or the Eiffel Tower, it was like five o'clock in the morning, but it was like so much daylight. And so it was just you and I, it seemed like it was just you and I, I was like no one else there. It's like we were the only ones in the world, you know, on top of the world at that moment. I would definitely say that that was one of my, my greatest moments when I felt like, this is how it is gonna be. Like this is life. Like it's just gonna be us two in this moment right now and for the rest of our lives. So, a lot of people say like, oh, how, how, why does it look like y'all are the only ones there? A lot of people don't realize we actually did our ceremony at 7 a.m. in the Eiffel Gardens. Um, that was another suggestion by Fran. So shout out Fran. Um, and it just made it seem like we were the only ones there, which we pretty much were until, you know, right after the ceremony. <clears throat> How much time would you allot to plan an elopement? It just depends, right? It just depends. Um, um, so I would say it doesn't take long. It just, it honestly depends on the availability of the people that you want to work with. Um, we were at an advantage because we did, um, plan our elopement like eight months out. So I, you know, it, we had enough time to get everything that we needed done. Unfortunately, it's not like a number of time that you can put on that, but you know, that's what I would say. How did your family uh, receive the news of your elopement? I think it was received well. I feel like um, the way we revealed it uh, made it a little bit easier to swallow, mm -hmm. um, especially, yeah. you know, especially for those, you know, really close to us, you know, right. I.e. my mom, you know, <laughs> your sister. Yeah. <laughs> um, that made it a lot easier because they still felt a part of it. Did you both agree on an elopement from the beginning? We um, decided to go against the traditional wedding. I mean, well, you you kind of wanted a traditional wedding. Well, I, th I, th I wanted one for my family. You know, initially, like we said, we were, we were looking at venues for a traditional wedding. Right. Um, and for me, you know, um, the elopement idea came up because I don't have my mom or my dad or my dad. And so for me, a lot of the traditional values of it wasn't there. And for me, I, I think the wedding is a bigger deal for the bride. The actual day itself um, is 
her day. So I wanted to make sure that she was happy. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, we still did something unique and did what we wanted to do, something that we would find special for the rest of our lives. And I think that's what we accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do differently if you had to do it all over again? What would you do different? <laughs> would you tell someone different? Would you? I, For me, it, what would I do different? I thought it was a cool idea to, to keep it a secret and just like reveal and be this like huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, but now I feel like it wouldn't have mattered either way if I had let certain people know, mm -hmm. i.e. my mom, <laughs> mm -hmm. that uh, we were eloping. So I probably would tell my mom. Mm -hmm. That would be the only thing that I would do differently. Okay. I wouldn't have done anything different. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, that wraps up our part two of our one year anniversary series. Um, we have a third part that'll be posting uh, next Sunday. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you're following us on social media on Instagram at It's Miller Time TV. And make sure while you're here, you hit that subscribe button, please. That's it. All right. Well, we appreciate you uh, following this whole entire series. Make sure if you haven't seen the first video, you go back and watch it. There should be a link up here somewhere. Make sure you hit the notification bell because you won't want to miss what we got coming up. <laughs> Check you guys later, YouTube. Uh, peace. Stay cool.